Hello everyone, this is Ali from MCAT Mastery. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about studying with a friend or somebody else that is also studying for the MCAT at the same time as you. I have a few different options that I've laid out depending on your individual situation and what works for you. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the benefits of studying with somebody else. So in terms of the benefits of studying with another person, I think there are three main benefits, those being understanding, accountability, and morale. So with understanding, if you can teach somebody a concept, then you truly understand it. And if you're struggling to teach somebody a concept, then that means that there are gaps in your understanding and you can fill them together with somebody else. And that works the same way uh, the other way around. If you're the one receiving the feedback or getting something explained to you, you can understand it a lot better when you have someone teaching it to you face to face rather than reading some answers on Reddit. Reddit is wonderful, however, sometimes writing on the internet can be really confusing. Maybe there's grammar issues that makes it confusing and just having somebody speak to you can be very, very clear. So I think that's a wonderful way of going about answering questions. And secondly, with accountability, I know I touched on that with the study buddy that you may not know, but this is great for just making sure that you're sticking to your goals and you're sticking to your schedule. Especially when you're studying independently, it's really easy to get behind and say, oh, well, I can just push that to tomorrow, or maybe I can spend a little bit more time having fun with friends. And while it's really important to balance having fun and taking breaks, it is important to schedule a certain amount of study time and really stick to it. You need to be strict enough on yourself to make sure you get all your goals done because it really is just about getting the questions done and getting the exposure and ensuring that you understand the concepts behind those questions. And having someone there with you really helps to check in with that. And lastly, overall morale. I know how difficult this test is. I understand how difficult it is, especially when you're studying independently and nobody understands. You might tell your partner or your friends or your family, but they're not going through it. They don't fully understand no matter how great they are at empathizing. And I think venting to somebody when you are frustrated, because of course you will get frustrated at times or maybe feel like even giving up every once in a while, being able to explain that to somebody who knows exactly what you're going through in real time is a lot more beneficial than speaking to somebody who doesn't know what's happening. And it's a great morale boost and the two of you can just try to stay positive together and say, you can do it, you are smart, you are capable, you're just getting in your head whenever something's happening. And it's just a wonderful way to stay positive and to stay turning towards your dream goal. So one of the options, and this is the way that I studied for my retake, is studying via FaceTime, or if you don't have an iPhone, then Skype or Google or whatever you use to video call. And in this way, you are essentially FaceTiming, I'll just call it for short, throughout the entire duration of your study session. However, both of you are on mute, so you can't hear each other or get distracted by any background noise. It's really just in case you need the other person's help. So when we did run into a particularly difficult question or we couldn't figure out an answer choice, we would either text the other person if they looked busy or if it was clear that they were on a break, we would just unmute ourselves, chime in and say, hey, could you take a look at this? I can share my screen or I can send you a picture. Let's work through this together. And I thought this was so helpful because sometimes the internet doesn't have a quick answer and you don't have time to spend hours turning through all the different resources there are online to figure out where is this answer that I'm looking for. And I think that it's also really helpful to see an answer choice from someone else's perspective, somebody else who might understand it in a way that you didn't. I had this friend that I was studying with who drew great analogies that had the concept just click for me instantly in a way that I didn't think would be possible if I was just working through it alone. And in addition to running into questions that we had throughout our normal prep, we did flashcards together almost every night, sometimes for 30 minutes if we didn't have a lot of time, sometimes for upwards of two hours. We would go back and forth asking each other questions on our flashcards. And I loved this because this is a way that I realized I didn't understand concepts as much as I thought I did. I would ask her a question on my flashcard, which I thought I had a pretty great understanding of. And then she would ask follow-up questions of things that she didn't understand. And I was sitting there thinking, 
oh no, I don't understand this either. I thought that I understood this concept, but I think I only understood it as at a surface level and I really didn't understand the concept deeply. And so when this would happen, which happened quite a few times during our flashcard sessions, we would both go on Reddit, we'd watch videos, we'd both dive into figuring out what is the best way to understand this. And sometimes it would take 20 minutes, 30 minutes for us to get a really great answer and a really great understanding of this concept but I would update my flashcard accordingly so that the analogy we drew that made more sense or any additional definition that clarified some confusing points just made the whole concept make so much more sense. And I really enjoyed doing this with her. And lastly, what we did is that we sometimes took full lengths together on the same day because we had a projected test date of the same day. So we were kind of on the same study schedule. And whenever we did take them on the same day, the next day or whenever we were reviewing, we would try to review as much as we could together because not only are the full lengths just really exhausting to go over and it's nice to know that somebody's going through it at the same time as you, along every step when we would come to a question that we really struggled with on the exam, we would hash through it together, very similarly to the way that we worked through flashcards together. And again, I think this really helped my understanding of these questions that I found particularly difficult. And it's also nice just having the morale of having somebody there doing the same thing that you're doing, which is incredibly difficult. And if we were not taking full lengths together on the same day, or if we were taking a different full length, what we would do is ask the other person, are you taking this full length? If so, have you already taken it? Or if she was taking a next step test and I had already taken it a couple weeks before. She was able to ask me questions because I had already taken the exam. We would of course have no spoilers and never ask somebody for help on something that they haven't taken because that spoils the chance for them to answer that question without getting any background knowledge. However, if both of us had seen the question, we would work through it together even if we hadn't taken that full length on the same day. So in a, as a similar concept, it worked very well as well. Another option for studying with another person is studying in person, which I know is very common for students who are still in university who have friends who are also taking the MCAT at a similar time as them. And I think this is great for a lot of reasons because you don't have to worry about technical issues and you're working out things together on a whiteboard maybe. If you rent a big room in the library and you have a large whiteboard and both of you have um, dry markers and you can write down everything that you're thinking, write down these pathways or these confusing concepts that are tripping you up. I think that's a great way to hash it out together. However, I would make sure that if you're going to do this, you are studying with somebody who remains focused like you do. I know that I tend to get a little bit distracted when I'm studying with somebody in person and the larger the group, the more likely you'll get distracted. So. If you're studying in person, I would keep it to a small group and I would definitely lay down guidelines and say, let's study for 45 minutes and you can set a timer and then you can talk through some things that were confusing during that period of time or whatever works for the two or three of you. Um, but those are some of the concerns that come up when it comes to studying in person. However, I think it's a great way to stay engaged and to really understand what somebody is saying because they can draw it out for you instead of having to take pictures of things to show you. And the last option that I have for studying with another person is if you don't know anybody that is studying for the MCAT, whether that be in your university or your work setting, whatever situation you're in. And if you're looking for somebody to study with, then there are different sites like Reddit and I think a site called studypal.com, something like that, where they pair you with somebody studying for the MCAT that has a similar score goal and is taking it around the same time. So you're on generally the same track. And I know this is really uncomfortable and can be super awkward, especially at the beginning, but if you really feel like you need that accountability check and having somebody else taking the test at the same time as you, I think this is a great option. And there's quite a few different ways that you can address this, especially because it can be a little bit uncomfortable not knowing this person. You can use essentially the first option, which is FaceTiming basically every time that you study throughout the whole session and muting each other, coming to each other when you need help but I know that that can be a lot of screen time for somebody who you don't know. So I think that another great way is just to 
check in when you have questions and you don't necessarily need to be FaceTiming all day, but you can send each other pictures or say, hey, can you call for a second? This is really confusing me. You can also keep it strictly to text if that makes you more comfortable and just send pictures and draw out things if you have to explain them that way. And I also think that this would be a great way to utilize the flashcards that I mentioned in the first option, because you can just call for that 30 minute window or that hour window, whatever works best for you and your study buddy and go through flashcards together. And since it's so not high intensity, but a little bit fast paced, the way that you're going through flashcards, I think that it will take care of a little bit of the awkwardness. You're not just sitting there in silence. You're actually working through things together. And uh, another way that I know some people use is instead of relying on this person for help with any sort of questions they have, it's really just for accountability. You can just check in with each other at the end of every day and say, how was your day? Did you get everything done? Did you meet your goals? And maybe every morning you can send them a list of your goals, you know, saying, I wanna get through 25 psych soj questions, 15 bio biochem, and I wanna do a content review of chemviz in this section. And at the end of each day at your check-in, you could say, well, I finished psych soj, but I was struggling to finish chemviz because I was pretty distracted. And having somebody there to listen and to give you feedback and advice is really great for accountability. So that is another option as well. And if you can't find a, a study buddy or somebody who is studying for the MCAT at the same time as you, we are always available for tutoring here at MCAT Mastery. And I'll make sure that we put a link below to sign up and work with one of our tutors who can be that study pal for you and really work through these difficult questions with you. If you liked this video and are interested in learning about more MCAT strategy and getting more information on ways to tackle this test in ways that have helped myself and many other people, feel free to sign up for our free MCAT strategy emails and videos below. I'll make sure that we link something for you to be able to get that information. And I know you can do it. You are doing wonderful. And I hope to see you soon in a tutoring session.